In the last lecture, we started validating the registration form. In this lecture, we're going to complete that validation. If you look at the resource folder, I've created a new file, utility.php. In that file, I have four functions. The first function will be checking for empty feed. The other function will check for minimal length required. The third one will check for email, valid email address. Why the last one will just display the error messages. So let's look at the very first function. Basically, the only difference from what we have done before is that we are putting this within a function. Because if you look at this code, it's the exact same code that we used to validate for empty feed in the last lecture. So what I've done is I've just copied that code and I've pasted it here within this function. This function basically accepts a parameter containing all the required feeds. So if we go back to sign up page, required feeds, which we define here, will be passed into uh, this function. So we do the basic error checking and store the value in the form error arrays. Then finally, we return the error message wherever this function is called. The check minimal length function accepts an array which contains all the feeds that we want to check for the minimum length. So if you see the comment above here, this will be an associative array which we're going to pass through to this function. Example, we are checking for username and we want to ensure that the minimum length is 4. We're checking for email and we want to ensure that the minimum length is 12. So we basically pass through this array to this function, check minimal length. We instantiate our error message here. Then we're going to loop through this array. So for each of the elements in this array, we also want to assess what is the value. In this case, we have username and the value is four. So here we're using the PHP trim function to trim out all leading spaces and also using the string length function to check for the length of the value which the user has entered in this feed. So we're going to compare it to the required minimum length. In this case, uh, for example, username is four. So if the value entered here by the user is less than the minimum length required, then we're going to store this error message in our form error arrays. Lastly, we return the form error arrays wherever this function is called. So next, I have the check email function. It's going to receive an array of data. We initialize our error message here and we specify a key. So the key that we're going to be looking for within this data is email. So we're going to check if email exists in the data using the PHP array key function. So this function basically will check if this string, which we have defined here, email, exists in the array that was uh, passed into this function. So if it exists, we're going to also check because here we're only checking for the key. So now we're also going to check, does the key have a value? So if the value is not equal to null, then we're going to first start by sanitizing the email. Basically, this is a PHP function that will help us to remove all illegal strings from the email that was entered by the user. Then next, we are going to also use the feta validate email to check if it's actually a valid email address. So if this is not a valid email address, which means if the result that we are getting from this is false, then we are going to store this message in our form errors array. And lastly, we return the form error arrays wherever the check email function is called. So the last function is basically just going to show the error messages that we've uh, stored so far. So we've stored errors here. We've also stored errors here. And we've also stored errors here. So wherever these errors are called, we're going to actually use the show error functions to uh, print it out for the users to see. 
So here we have a variable errors. So previously the error message was appended to this part of the statement here and here. So now what I've did is extracted it into a function and uh, we are going to call this function somewhere to display the error messages. So let's see how we're going to uh, utilize these functions in our sign up page. Okay, the first thing you notice at the very top here, I've included our uh, utilities.php here in order to have access to the code that we've uh, written in the utilities uh, page. This remains the same. Required feed array, email, username, and password. So we're going to actually pass this required feed array to our check NT array function. So this is going to be the array that is passed to this function. So we're going to actually merge the returned value here. Remember that this function we return an array of error messages. So we're going to basically merge the error message which is being returned from this array with the form error array that we've created here, which is this. So basically we merge the error message returned from this function to the form errors arrays and we again store it inside the form error arrays. So next, feeds that requires checking for minimal length. So we create an array and we say username should be four and password should be six. We basically just merge the array that is returned from this function to uh, the previous array that we have here and restore it in the form error array. So next we also check for the email address. Basically we call the check email function here and pass in the post array. So we actually also do the same thing. We merge the return value here to this array and store it in the form error array. Every other thing remains the same actually except for the result part. So like I said before, I have extracted the uh, other part that displays the error and stored it in the uh, show error function so that we can actually reuse this uh, in other places within our code. So here I am just going to check if the form error array is not empty, then we want to call the show error function and pass it the form error arrays. Now let's see how this will look like in the browser. Okay, so we're going to test, enter demo, demo email address, let's say demo2, username. Okay, let's start by testing for empty strings. So here we see. Username is too short, must be four characters long. Password is too short, must be six characters long. And the error messages which we uh, saw in the previous lecture. So now we try to enter something here, demo2, username, demo2, password is uh, testing. Click on sign up and tells us email is not a valid email address. Okay, so next we're going to try to see if we add a valid email address if the system accepts. So say demo2 at yahoo.com. So uh, name is demo2, password is testing. Hit the sign up and we see here registration is successful. So one more thing I want to do here is to actually set for where we're displaying the error messages for the SQL statement, we'll just add a border to it. So border equals one pieces solid. So border should be uh, solid gray. You can see gray, okay. Okay, so do the same thing, copy this and just add it here. Okay, so we try to add another data. Demo3 at yahoo.com Demo3 So registration successful. 
So next, we're going to be considering how to log in users. Since we've already registered users, so we are going to look at how to sign them into the system.